Okay, bingo. Think Tech Tech Talks here on a given Thursday. We're Sean Talbot of Amare. Amare. And we're going to call that the mental wellness company. And Debbie Zimmerman, one of our directors and one of the best people on the planet, right here with us. To, <laughs> I agree. Both, wow. both very good. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And, you know, <clears throat> Sean, I have this feeling that I know you. How's that? <laughs> I feel like I've met you before and that's engaged right. with you. That's right. That's right. Yeah, we go way back. So you you have created and you run Amare, the mental wellness company, and you're here on a, a speaking tour, I guess, mm -hmm. is it? Yep. And um, yesterday, aside from other media, other media, you were you were speaking at the Central Union Church about this. How did that go? Oh, it was great. We had a, we had a fantastic turnout. Room was full, and you know, people seemed to be interested. But I'll tell you, the 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 way that I know people enjoyed what we were talking about, there were a lot of questions. You know, and at the end, one one person put up their hand right in the middle. He said. We need to tell this story to everybody. We need to yeah. spread the word. And I said, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. <laughs> That's why we're here. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, Debbie, you spoke to uh, Beth Ann Koslovich and Carol Koslovich I did. Yesterday. Well, actually, we did. Carol, yes. Carol, okay. Uh -huh. And they were at Central Union Church. What they was the were. conversation? Oh, Carol was just, she was so enlightened and so hopeful. And she thought that this was one of the most significant events that NAMI had produced for Lunch and Learn. And it's just attacking mental wellness with the latest science from a different angle. And uh, so it was, it was very rewarding. I think everybody left very hopeful um, that they can have better mental wellness and, yeah. and to take a different tack toward it. Yeah, that's great. And so, and, and not to be a mystery here, the title of our show is Optimizing Your Health, I Suppose Your Mental Health, Among Other Things, Through Nutrition. And we're going to talk about your gut is mm -hmm. your your gut is your brain, so right. to speak. That's, yeah. that's exactly right. It's, okay. it's, it's, you know, we call it the second brain. Uh, but in some ways, it's the first brain because a lot of what happens here in the gut drives what we feel and how we behave and how we perform up here in the first brain. Okay, and Sean is Sean S H A W N. I want to yep, be clear about that's that. That's right. So you wouldn't confuse him with anybody else. <laughs> Sean is the founder of uh, Amare, and Amare is the mental wellness company. And this is all around products that help your biome. That's and right. And he is a nutritionist. Yeah? Right, right. Yeah, a nutritional biochemist, you know. So I study the biochemistry of what we eat and how we exercise and things. Like what our stress hormones do and what our neurotransmitters do. And a lot of what, it, 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 what governs all of that is the microbiome, is the, is the bacteria in our guts. Ah, the operative word governs. So how does the biome, you know, which is important, we've talked about that before, I feel recently. Uh, <laughs> um, how does the biome communicate with the rest of the body? I mean, is this a nerve thing? Is it a biochemical? I, mm -hmm. I suspect it's a biochemical thing. It, um, how, do, how do they do that? It's what we, so one of the ways that it does it is through what we call the axis. So when we talk about the gut-brain axis, the axis is that third part of the puzzle, which is a very redundant, overlapping communication network. So some of the signals go back and forth between these two brains through the nervous system. Two-way system. Two-way system, back and forth, yeah, yeah. bi-directional, and that's really important. So some s signals go through the nervous system. Some are biochemical signals. They're neurotransmitters and hormones and cytokines. And some of the What's signals cytokine? go... Uh, so, so, so a cytokine is kind of like a hormone between two cells. Okay. Uh, but then the cells also talk to each other. The immune system can reach down into the gastrointestinal tract and get information from the bacterial cells and then kind of like Pony Express fashion, take that information to to the glial cells in the brain and then to the adrenal cells and then to your thyroid cells. And it really is, the immune system is a very important part of that axis. So it's division of labor. I mean, you're not communicating everything to every cell. That's right. You're commu communicating to certain systems and organs in the body. Right? That's right. And, and, you know, one of the reasons that we know that this is an important aspect of health is that it is so redundant, right? It's not just one nerve. It's not just one signal. It's this overlapping series of signals. And so that tells us that it's really important for these two tissues to be communicating with each other on a continuous basis. What a great idea. <laughs> I know, exactly. <laughs> Who's the guy yeah. who invented oh, yeah. that? Yeah, exactly. Well, intelligent design, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's really I saw a piece on television last night about uh, biomimicry, okay, where you look at a bird or a fish or a fowl, whatever, and um, 
uh, you, uh, you, you see the, the, the innovative aspects of its life and mm -hmm. functionality, and you try to mimic that in science. Right. And so in, in this case, you look at what you were just talking about, the connection and the, the you know, sending of signals and all that, and you say, gee, what a great idea. Right. But, you know, I mean, without getting religious about this, mm. it's an evolutionary process, mm. right? And, and in the grand plan for the development of humankind, there yep. was an evolutionary plan. How did that unfold? Because we started as little sea animals. That's right. And we didn't have an intestine or a digestive tract. All of a sudden, we started, you know, folding in on ourselves. Yep. And in the middle was this place where the biome lived. Right. How, how, why did that happen? What was the point of it? Yeah, well, I think the point of it is that, that we're able to do more things together than we are separately, right? So think about one bacteria can do something. Two bacteria can do something that, that one can't do on its own. Now when you get 100 trillion bacteria in your gut... That's not th a joke. That's, that, that's that, that, a real that's number. That's a real, a real number. number. 100 trillion. That's yeah. more stars than there are in the Milky Way, right? Yeah. To just give people a perspective for how big a number that is. Now what we realize is that that microbiome is producing 90% of the neurotransmitters in our body. So that means that the body doesn't have to do that. Um, it means that most of our immune system resides in the gut, so we don't have to build all of that immune system ourselves. Here's one that'll really blow your mind. We, we recently learned that the, the, the microbiome, the, the, the genes in the microbiome, determine the expression of our human genes. The, the, the genes of the bacteria. Genes of the, the bacteria okay. tell the genes in the human body to turn on or turn off. Ah. And so that means that the human body can get by with a fairly low amount of genes. We only have about 23,000 genes in our human body. There are about 20 million genes in the, in the genome, in the, in the microbiome. And so that shows that there's really this synergistic back and forth interplay between the bacteria and the human we're we're only we're only 10% uh, human on a cellular basis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're less than 1% human on a genetic basis. Yeah. It's all bacteria is driving the show in a certain sense. But what a great idea! Whoever had that idea, <laughs> it's, it's, it's biological efficiency. Is right, what it is. right. And 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 part of how this happened is that you know we're just learning about it scientifically, how to measure it with genetic techniques, but. These bacteria have been on the planet for four and a half billion years. They've had a long time to sort of figure this out through evolution and trial and error, and, and we're, we're reaping the benefits of that now. You know, the thing about that research is that it's right there. Right. You don't have to go to the far depths of That's the right. polar ice cap to find it. That's right. If there yeah. still is an ice cap. <laughs> <laughs> it's right there. So your research is so easy to do. We all have it, and you can make comparisons. You can look under a microscope, mm -hmm. and it's bacteria and the DNA and the bacteria. I mean, how far advanced are we, Sean, on this kind of research involving a, the bacteria and the DNA of the bacteria, and the connection between that and the rest of the human body. Yeah, well, it's 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 really um, it, interesting early stage emerging work, right? So right now we know there are specific strains of bacteria in the gut that can govern our depression or our anxiety or our stress. And those are the ones that we kind of focus on right now with the things that we do at Amare. But just last week, we discovered two new species of bacteria in the microbiome that were never known before. It's, I mean, it's literally like a deep rainforest where we're going in there as explorers and trying to figure out what is all going on. So as much as we're learning about it and as exciting as it is, we have decades before we're going to tease out all of it, right? And that's exciting because... You know, we think that, we, that there are diseases, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and MS and autism, that right now we think are incurable. Through the microbiome, those might be completely preventable in the future, right? It's really, really exciting time. You're going to have to change the tagline of your company because you'll have products that are not only mental wellness, but yeah. wellness of various kinds right, and right, various, yeah. right. you know, diseases and conditions and and, um, you know, I mean, the whole enchilada, yeah, really. Yeah, exactly. And actually, you know, we do see that kind of stuff now. The reason that we focus on mental wellness is because the mental wellness changes, we can actually get fairly quickly. We can help somebody feel better sometimes in a day, sometimes in a week, sometimes in a month. And if they feel better, they'll continue doing that thing. And so their inflammation comes down, their immune system gets better because that's governed by the microbiome. And then their physical health starts to change. You know, skin gets better and aches and pains start to alleviate. And you start to see real physical changes because of the mental status is improved. Mm.
you talk about uh, inflammation and can you talk about uh, the immune system here and how this relates to that? Yeah, yeah you know, when I, when I talk about the microbiome, it's, it, it really is an important sort of first piece of the puzzle because the microbiome will, will um, orchestrate everything that the immune system does. The microbiome trains the immune system. The microbiome tells the immune system what to attack and what to ignore. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's important from a, from a, you know, protect us and, you know, that perspective. But the biggest source of inflammation in the body is your immune system. And so if it's not properly regulated, it is going to be inflaming you. And that's going to lead to problems with your brain and problems with your gut and problems with your joints and et cetera. So we could go directly to the inflammation or we could go below that and say, what's controlling the inflammation? It's the immune system. And then we can go level below that and say, what's controlling the immune system? It's the microbiome. Mm -hmm. So I like to focus on the microbiome first. Let's fix that. Let's get that into balance. And maybe these other things will just normalize on You know, I got to tell you, I, I, I envy you. <laughs> no, I envy you because you're the cutting edge. And not only the cutting yeah. edge in some theoretical sense, but the cutting edge that affects our lives every day mm -hmm. and which could affect your life and which could affect Debbie's life. I remember right. when I introduced Dr. Sh Dr. Sean to my medical doctor in Hawaii, and that was his comment. He said, wow, this guy is really on, he's a pioneer and he's on the forefront of science. And he really had a lot of respect <laughs> for the work that he's doing because it is a paradigm shift. And Dr. Sean is one of the leaders. Yeah. Can you talk about the dirt book? The, 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 eat the uh, let them eat dirt or let something like dirt, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's it. I mean, that's a great concept that, you know, the, the, the sort of premise of that book, which I recommend to everybody to, to take a look at, is that we've become too clean in our world, right? Antibacterial sprays and soaps and things like that. But what we do is we, like, we need exposure to those microbes. We need exposure to the bacteria. They're not all bad. Some of those bacteria will help train our microbiome, which trains our immune system, which, which helps our human health. So bacteria, we need bacteria. We need the right kind of bacteria. Right. We need the right amount of bacteria. And we need to, you know, have bacteria that relate to us, that are, that are our kind, our little family. That's right. <laughs> so you know, I, I just wonder what happens if I go and I take a ton of antibiotics. Mm. Now, now my friends, the bacteria are going to be affected by that. That's right. What, what's the best case analysis and the worst case analysis if I don't do it right? Well, if you don't do it right, if you do it like most American kids these days, by the time they get to be about age 12, they've gone through 8 to 10 to 12 courses of antibiotics. And we know that after just one course of certain antibiotics, it can completely decimate your microbiome, so much so that it might never come back to where it was before. And so, you know, you can't just rely on luck that your microbiome grows back the right way. We really have to encourage people, you know, if you do have to take an antibiotic to, for some infection, you really have to be focused on rebuilding that healthy microbiome. So the right foods, the right thought patterns, the right stress levels, the right exercise, the right supplements to really get that rainforest back up to the diversity that we know is associated well, with health. Well, you say back up, but what about, what about a, a, a rainforest that's a little bit messed up uh, where the immune system isn't yeah. working right and who knows what follows from that, mm -hmm. you know, including mental wellness, but wellness in general, right, because it all flows... So um, suppose I want to improve my biome beyond where it was before. Right. Is, is that a valid, uh, you know, a valid uh, uh, design? Yeah. And should I do that? Absolutely. How do I do that? Yeah. And even in, in, in people who don't think they have a gut problem, right? We see people all the time who say, well, I don't have any problem with my gut. I seem to be perfectly fine down there. But they have aches and pains or they have fatigue or they have mood issues or whatever the case may be. And so we know that we can go into that, what we call dysbiotic, unbalanced microbiome. And what, 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 what that means is that they might not have enough of the good bacteria that are producing the chemicals that, that make us feel good. They might have too many of the bad bacteria that are producing inflammatory chemicals or junk food craving chemicals. And so we can change that just by the right diet, just by the right supplementation. And, and we can take them from being a little bit sort of overgrown the wrong way back to this beautiful diversity that is, that's the rainforest that we want. Yeah, and, one, and, and, sorry, go one ahead. One of the products that Sean invented, which I just love, is the three-day gut reboot. Oh, let's talk places, about that. Yeah, yeah, so you want to tell them about the, the reboot? Yeah, so the reboot is a way that we know that over just a short period of time, three days, we can change the microbiome from, from a dysbiotic state to more of a neutral state. And that gives a good foundation for, for repopulation, you know. So it's a, somebody said to me one time, I was explaining the science of it, and he raised his hand and he said, it sounds like it's sort of like you're taking a rototiller to the garden <laughs> to prepare the soil for the seeds. And I went, that's exactly what we're doing. I had never thought of it that way, but that's precisely what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, I, so I envy you because I know when you wake up in the morning, you're going to read the literature, you're going to know the science, you know who's doing what. And, and my guess is there are a lot of people all around the world who are doing work right. in this area. And, and for a long time, I, I'm, 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 going to, I'm, I'm going to envy you. However, I feel, and don't you agree, that ordinary people will learn about this yeah. and, and that we'll all be talking about the biome. Yeah. And we'll all know more than we know now. We'll know That's about right. the relationships of one kind of biome against another, what kind of bacteria, what kind of DNA. Um, and, we'll, and we'll be thinking about how you do this right. And every doctor will know about That's it. Right. right now, I don't yep. think all doctors know That's about right. this. You know? That's right. But you've just described the future. That's exactly what's going to happen right now. You know, I, I, as a scientist, I've never seen something come out of the scientific realm into the public sector faster than this is making the leap. Mm. And I think part of it is that the science is exciting. I think part of it is like the seminar yesterday. It's another tool in the toolbox for people who are trying to help others with this. Yes. But I also think that we're learning enough where regular people can just take ideas like this and plug it into their life and improve themselves. And yeah. that's, and, that's really what people want. And I want. think the naturopathic community has known this for a long time. Um, but now the medical hasn't community... hasn't been generally accepted. But it hasn't been, accepted that's medical, true. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah. But now it's medical... Well, we're going to start accepted. educating people right now, yeah. Debbie, because we have a short clip. Okay. And this, is the beginning, this is the beginning of your education about the biome right. <laughs> and about how the gut affects the brain. Ready? Play. People struggle <laughs> in their own skin. Well, Some so you people don't, don't love themselves well, so enough. You don't the they don't feel... Confident, Sorry. Enough, they you have low self esteem, we could, they have anxiety. To to touch. Uh -huh. okay, okay. If you just focus and take you care of so you're just going to have to. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're just going to have to then like, you can take, take our word that it's good. So I want to come back and talk about you. Your mind will be healthy and your lens will be clear, and then you'll see the world in a different light. I had been studying weight loss and sports performance and those sorts of things. But now what I really focus my scientific career on is how to improve that mental wellness. And it's not just about getting a depressed person to feel normal again. It's about getting the average person to feel amazing. Five to ten years ago, people didn't talk about mental health. And people not only want to talk about it, but they want to find solutions. They want to find natural solutions something that can really truly help change someone's life. That's really what drives me. I always just kind of felt like, how can I be part of something bigger? And this is big. This is gonna be massive. Where we sit right now in history is right at the cusp of a complete paradigm shift in how we think about mental wellness. If we had a problem that we perceived here, it seemed like it made sense that it should target the brain. And that's what we've been doing for the last 100, 200 years. What we're realizing now is that maybe that isn't our primary target. And what we're seeing here in the brain is a secondary effect of something else that's happening in the body. And what we've just learned in the last five to 10 years is that yes, that is a secondary effect. The primary effect, and therefore the primary target, is in the gut. That's the second brain. That's where we have 100 trillion bacteria in our intestines. That number is more than there are stars in the Milky Way. So the gut microbiome makes more serotonin than the brain does. That's the feel-good neurotransmitter. It makes more dopamine than the brain. This idea of the gut-brain axis, targeting the brain, but targeting the second brain in the gut, and then targeting the communication network between them, that axis, that's really the forefront of science and the forefront of how we're gonna actually get ahead of all of these mental wellness issues and have a benefit in people's lives. We've developed a line of products that we call the fundamentals. These are the products that address the brain, the second brain or the gut, and the axis in between to maximize the communication between them so that we get the optimal mental wellness outcome. We wanted to make sure that we were addressing other areas in mental wellness. People that have needs in the area of sleep or energy or mood or just basic nutrition. If we're going to make a true impact in a positive way on people's lives, we have to look at the entire holistic approach. It's not one solution, it's many solutions coupled together in a seamless experience that will deliver optimum results. We have to provide behavioral therapies, programs, education on nutrition, education on exercise. And when you bring them all together in a holistic way, that's what's going to change the world. There's nobody doing what we're doing. It's a revolution that we're leading. 
So our Mari mission is not about one person. Eventually, we want to take our mission to the entire world, but we can't do it alone. I invite you to join us. Okay, okay, we're back. I'm Jay Fidel. That's Sean Talbot. That's Debbie Zimmerman. And we're talking about Amare. We're talking about the gut is your brain. And, uh, you know, the, the objects on the table here, Sean, look a lot like what was in the movie. That's right. They, they, so what, what is on the table? That's right. Tell us so this, this is our fundamentals pack. This is the, the world's first coordinated gut-brain axis system. So all the th signals that we're talking about here, the first brain, the second brain, the axis in between, these are products that address all the different levels there. That it's, it's for the microbiome, it's for your gut integrity, it's for your immune system and your inflammation and your neurotransmitters all in one pack so that, you know, one of the challenges with someone who doesn't feel the way they want to feel is you don't know where your dysfunction is. You don't know what's off. And so a pack like this addresses all of it simultaneously. So no matter where that is, it's off and then it, 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 you take the off, you balance it, and then you optimize it. So how does this affect your psychology? I mean, there must be a chain of events that happen here. But how does it, suppose I'm having a bad day, I'm depressed, mm -hmm. uh, or I'm bipolar, or one of those, you know, diagnoses, you know, right. around your mental wellness. Um, how does this affect that? How does this balance my brain? Well, it balances it because, and, and we've been able to show this in a clinical trial, that when you take a, pa a package like this for just a single month, your microbiome changes significantly. So better good bacteria, less bad bacteria, better gut integrity. Then better signaling goes from the gut to the brain, and then we can measure psychology. So we can measure depression and anxiety and brain fog and irritability and all those sorts of things and show that they all go down. So we can show to somebody, hey, you f you're feeling better, but here's how you're feeling better. Here's why you're feeling better. And that's very encouraging and reassuring to somebody and then they'll say wow i really do feel better it's not a placebo response let me continue doing that and then they feel more better and more better and more better and it's really great to see so does it, when you get the feedback you know and how well you're doing um does that does that tend to change any of the way you you administer the um you know the uh, the material um it, 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 do you, for example if you're not feeling better do you increase the material i, I call it material i guess the product is sure a word. sure um uh, if you're feeling great, do you decrease the product? Do you what? What is the term of treatment, so to speak? Right. So there's some aspect of of these products being able to be used. They're natural products, so people can use them in what in, in what we call a flexible manner. If you have more stress on one day, you can use a little bit more. If you have less stress on another day, you can use a little bit less. But we like people to take it on a continuous basis to make sure that they stay in balance in the face of everything that can unbalance us, you know, stress and traffic jams and, 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 and bad thoughts and bad diet. Those are all things that can take us back to imbalance. And we want to be able to fight against that and stay resilient. Now, what about a, a condition, a psychological condition, a mental condition where the individual does not know where he does not have or she does not have consciousness mm -hmm. of the fact that he's like off balance. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, that thought press has to lie with someone else then, right? Right, right. And, you know, we'll see that sometimes where, you know, even if somebody just has a, you know, a little bit of the blues and they are getting better, sometimes humans aren't very good at sensing how they're doing and it takes somebody around them. So we have examples all the time of someone going, it might be working, but I'm not really sure. And there's literally somebody standing behind them going, it's working, it's working, because yeah. people can ab observe that. And that's one of the reasons it's important in our clinical trials that we actually quantify those psychological metrics, right? We use very well-validated surveys to figure out, yes, you, you're feeling 21% better, and here's how we can show you that. This is by, by subjective responses that's of, right. the, of the individual. That's right. <laughs> but what about, do I need a psychologist to, to, to do metrics on this, to figure out what the real condition, you know, the wellness, can, mental mm -hmm. wellness condition is? Um, I don't think you necessarily need that. I think people should feel empowered to, 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 to self-treat like that, right? These are, these are nutrients that used to be part of our diet. So people should feel encouraged to, to do that for themselves. But we have lots and lots of healthcare practitioners that are viewing this kind of thing as another tool in their toolbox. You know, so if they're doing... If they're doing talk therapy or they're doing cognitive behavioral therapy or they're doing drug therapy, whatever it is, this is another thing that can help those therapies work even better. Yeah, isn't it true that as we go forward, you know, there was some statistic about this recently, 
more of us become caregivers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that means we care, we watch, we help. Uh, you know, we're 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 going <clears> to <throat> give kindness, give attention right. uh, to our fellow human being. <clears throat> and so, I mean, I think as we go forward in a perfect world. Um, there will be more caregivers and more mm, people familiar with this process and these products mm -hmm. uh, about the biome going forward. Right. And it won't necessarily be doctors, uh, you know, who specialize in one thing or another. Right. It will be all of us. Right, exactly. You know, one thing that I see, I've been doing this kind of research for about 20 years, and one thing that I see is that when you can take somebody from a state of burnout to the, to the opposite state, which we measure as psychological vigor, that person feels better, which is, which is fantastic. But they feel so much better. You can see this ripple effect go out from that individual so that, you know, that woman is now a better mom. She's a better wife. She's a better worker. She's a better friend. You know, the husband is now better, 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 better in all those different ways. And so it ripples out in this very pro-social way. And other people see that and they go, oh, my gosh, what are you doing? I want to do that, too. Or you feel so much better. You reach out to somebody who isn't doing quite well and say, this is what I did and this is how it worked for me. Let's 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 do this together. Yeah. Now, sometimes I guess the caregiver is going to look at this individual and say, whoops, we got a real problem here. <clears throat> this is a pathological situation. Mm -hmm. uh, and this person is really not responsible for his own acts. Um, does it still have an effect on that person? You know, we haven't really gone so deep into conditions like schizophrenia, for example. Right. Some of these things where, you know, it seems like the whole system has gone haywire. We do know that the microbiome is involved in that. But I don't think we're to the level of research yet where we can go in and we can be therapeutic with it yet. We know that there's a dysfunction there in the gut-brain axis, and we're trying to tease out exactly what are the wrong signals, how can we manipulate those, how can we modulate them. But this is the, you know, we know certain things with the science, but it's still an emerging category. So right now it's in, in the context of a, of a supplement. Right. Uh, uh, you might find it in the GNC right. store. Right. Um, but do you think this will change? This will become more than a supplement? That will become, um, you know, uh, an FDA drug. I do. I think uh, every major pharmaceutical company has a microbiome division now, and so they're looking at it from a slightly different perspective. You know, as a nutritionist, I'm looking at it from the perspective of what can I do from 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 a natural therapy perspective to modulate the microbiome and make it healthier. And if we have a healthier microbiome, we're going to have a healthier human. Pharmaceutical company might look at it and say, all right, what is the microbiome making? What are those actual chemicals? Maybe I could synthesize one of those and I could have an, a new style of antidepressant drug. Sure. Right. If you, and if you put billions in the way they customarily <laughs> that's do, right. you might find some real breakthroughs on this Th that's whole right. line of science. Exactly. So tell us about your experience in your family, Debbie. Well, I had a son who had was experiencing recurring negative thoughts. And these would come in cycles, you know, it wasn't all the time, but it was enough that it really bothered him. And we kind of struggled with this for several years. And the doctor had suggested that we go on a low dose of long-term antibiotics. And I was very nervous about doing that because I was sensitive to what it might do to his microbiome. Mm -hmm. So coincidentally, I met a microbiologist at the University of Hawaii. And she introduced me to Amari. And I said, okay, well, I'll try your fundamentals line. You know, I, I'm looking for something that's natural, and I haven't been able to find a solution. So I gave my son the fundamentals line for three months. And at the end of that time, I asked him, so how is your mental health? And he paused, and he said, oh, mom, that's a non-issue now. You did spectacular. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's great. that is just, you know. In, in the space of three months. Three months, yeah. right? And. It's so empowering for him. I mean, he now he continues, even though he's in college, he continues to take the product on his own. Um, and he tells me when he's running low. And uh, he, he's just, we're both so grateful for what Dr. Sean has put together for our family. So, of course, when it worked for him, I thought, well, maybe I'll try it on myself, <laughs> right? We'll see what I can get, if I can optimize my own personal right. health, right? So I took it for about three months. And then I went in to see my medical doctor and I had my labs run. And so when my doctor walked in with my labs, first thing he said as he came through the door is, I'm not even going to ask you how you're doing because I'm looking at your labs and I can see you are doing very well. And lo and behold, you know, previously, whenever I had labs, I always had those pesky L's and H's or things are off. <laughs> right. And I thought, I really wondered, does anybody ever get perfect labs? Yeah, this yeah, is really right. irritating, right? right? Uh, because I eat well and I exercise and, you know, my labs aren't great, right? And it was the first time in my life there was nothing to talk about in our labs. 
you know. So I, I'm a believer. And so then I, then I went and shared it with my friends, and they're all getting very similar benefits. And it's really interesting to hear the stories that they tell me. Yeah, that's great. You know, one of the connections that I've noticed, and, you know, I'm a little overweight, it's okay, um, is obesity mm -hmm. is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is an expression of mental wellness. Yeah. Huh? Both ways, both right. ways. <clears throat> and I wonder, uh, you know, if these products have any effect on obesity. Or could they? They could, yes, exactly. In fact, we just we just took the fundamentals pack that you see here as the as the centerpiece of a of a of a larger program we call Project B three, which takes the brain and the biome, the, the gut brain axis we're talking we're talking about here, and adds in a body piece of it. Because what we found is that some of those body issues, belly fat, cravings for certain foods, willpower of staying on a plan actually are signals that are coming from the biome. And so we ran a program through the holidays, eight week program th through Thanksgiving, through Christmas, yeah. through Hanukkah, through all the time where everybody is stressed out, everybody gains weight. We had a 95% success rate of people losing weight. It was absolutely astonishing because people have tried the diet and exercise before and they've gotten a little bit of benefit and maybe gained the weight back. But now if we can change the biome, get the right signals to the brain, get the right signals out to the rest of the body, it really seems to allow them to have better traction with their plan. Yeah, what I've heard you talk about here, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a two-way street. And That's right. <clears throat> so, you know, we know, uh, I think it's clear for a long time, that the biome has an effect on your body and your, and your state of mind, yep. your thought life. That's right. Thought I love life. that yeah, term. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but query also, um, does does the brain have an effect on your biome? Can, for example, does the brain mm. do it autonomously, mm -hmm. or does the brain can the brain do it voluntarily? Right, right. Where I say I want my biome to be better. Yes. Or it, it actually does that naturally. Yeah, I mean, what so, is the connection? Yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a little more involved than just positive thoughts, right? Thinking happy thoughts to your biome, and it will it will grow. Um, <laughs> but we do know that it's it is bidirectional. Signals go from the biome to the brain and change how we feel. Those signals can, we, we know this now, negative thoughts can go down and can grow the wrong bacteria. Um, and even further than that, when those negative thoughts get reflected back and you continue that way, the, the architecture of the brain changes. The neurons actually wire in a different direction. And we know this just over the last six or eight months, UCLA did some studies, MRI studies, where they were measuring the architecture of the microbiome and the architecture of the brain, and they change in tandem with each other. Mm. So it's not just functional now, it's structural, and that mm. changes everything. This is so exciting. Yeah. Really, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's gonna dictate a lot of medicine going forward. And we're all going to learn so much more about it. Agreed. And it's wonderful to be able to talk to you, Sean. Thank you very much for having us. Yeah. Sean Talbert, Debbie thank you. Zimmerman, thank you very much. Oh, we have an right. event on Saturday. Oh, oh before yeah. we stop, yeah, an event on Saturday. Tell us about it. So it's Saturday, February 9th at the Ala Moana Hotel. Um, you can hear Dr. Sean speak about the entire Amare product line and about the latest science of, on gut and mental wellness. Um, so 9 to 10.30 at Ala Moana or at 2.30 to 4. Uh, so there's two different presentations and if you want to get a seat you could text me uh, at 808-202-0044 808-202-0044 thank you debbie and it's right. amare.com that's right a-m-a-r-e.com it right. means love and that is an essential element of all of absolutely this. thank you sean thank you debbie <laughs>